Hello, my friends. Jacob is here one more time. Thank God that is one more time. Thank you for pressing play, for joining me, for spending a little time with me. We're going to talk about some interesting things today. A lot of things connected to other things. Little the breadcrumbs, one after the other after the other. They all seem to come together. And thanks to all of you, I don't have to do any research. You all send me stuff and then boom, there it is. Another show. The big news, of course, is about what's going on with the twiddly diddly Twitter too. You know, with uh, the, the boss man, the uh, emperor of Mars himself, Elon Musk, buying a uh, lion share in uh, Twitter. He's now the head guy, the top guy. Owns more than the owner. Top guy. He was sending out little tweets here and there. He's saying, should we do this? Do you think uh, tr Twitter needs to change? Is there a censorship issue? He was like, he's like, your 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 uh, your answers, they have meaning. I of course answered. I'm like, yeah, I, I don't like censorship. I'm not I'm not a fan. Hoping that Elon changes things, but it gets weirder. Everything's coincidental, right? Little quinky dinky do. One thing leads to another, leads to another. We're gonna talk about the stuff going down with Twitter today. And of course, you know, everybody's up in arms. They're like, hey, bring back the Trumpster. Bring back Donald. Where's the Donald? Right? Twitter's not the same. Even Tim Pool was saying y you must bring back Donald Trump just because he's funny. Big news, of course, Twitter uh, users are urging Elon to bring him back. I put something out on Twitter. I said, well, that would make sense, right? This is how he gets back on the stage. I did say he'd be back. I don't know how, but I did say he'd be back. We're gonna talk about a lot of interesting things, more stuff dealing with the hair. More stuff dealing with Bell Air, Bell, Bell, all of these things. And even a little fox. A little fox. Don't let the foxes spoil the uh, vine. The fox. Fox is a very symbolic animal. Caught in the Capitol grounds. Fox is going nuts. A lot of people sent this to me. But I was already talking about it because I saw it. Of course I saw it, right? Talking about the nine-tailed fox. And all of a sudden, everybody's, you know, learning about this nine-tailed fox demon. And then here we have a fox that is on the Capitol grounds, biting people. <laughs> Congressman, biting people's coolies, biting them on the butts. I don't know if they bit him on the butts, but that's funny for me. Yeah, Fox was caught on the Capitol grounds. They euthanized the uh, the animal. I, I just found this out. Yep. Turned out it had rabies. Ironic, right? The fox in the, in the, in the Capitol. Almost as ironic a couple of years back when uh, Trump was coming out with his new tax bill and they discovered a brand new leech. There was a leech, a brand new leech discovered in the uh, DC swamp. The swamp! If you knew the channel, a lot of weird things about Donald Trump and a lot of weird things, right? We've almost on the channel, we've almost predicted things happening, like him losing the election, like th what happened on January 6th, and like his epic return to power, which I think is still gonna happen very shortly. Why wouldn't it happen? 
especially with all the stuff that's coming out about the Biden's laptop, the laptop from hell. The laptop that I had a dream about, right? <laughs> the laptop, I, I shared it in the last video. I don't know if I should share it again. You should go back and watch the last video. But I've been talking about this weird stuff for uh, many, many years. And then here you got uh, Michael Sussman, the uh, lawyer who uh, is in big trouble again with the FBI. He was paid to go over there and offer information that, uh, you know, that the, uh, the Trumpster was part of the, uh, you know, the Russian disinformation campaign. And it turned out it was all a bunch of baloney. So strange, totally sus, man. Sussman in the news, Clinton campaign in the news. So strange. All sorts of weird stuff coming out about President Biden. And I'm not just talking about all the footage where he just was bouncing around and he looked like he was aimless. I felt so bad for the guy. They, they said that they cut the footage to make it look like he was lost. Poor guy didn't look lost. He looked so confused. I felt really terrible for him. But once again, who knows, right? Everything's propaganda. We don't know. Maybe he's got his marbles. But I'll tell you one thing. It's, he, he probably doesn't want to have his marbles for what may happen next if uh, all this stuff is bad. He was writing letters for like uh, Chinese businessmen's sons to get into college who were buddies with his son. All of this stuff proves that supposedly, I don't know if it proves, that's what they say, that all this stuff is linked together. They call Hunter the, uh, the bag man. I don't know if it's true. That's just what's going on in the news. But I do know that a uh, ruler is going to be replaced. I've been saying it for a long time. Been saying it so that before it happened, long before even anybody thought it was a possibility of happening, so that when it happened, maybe people would say, okay, maybe there's a God, right? It's always about that. Now, the, uh, the whistleblower who handed the uh, ab abandoned laptop over, he's fled. He's so scared he's going to get killed. This, I mean, this, this, this is terrible. This is the country we're living in, that he's got to worry that he's going uh, to be killed. He reveals that he, um, he's got like 400 gigabytes, 450 gigabytes of deleted material, including 80,000 images and videos. Guy had a lot of stuff on his laptop, if that's the case. He's fled to Switzerland. His name's Jack Maxey. So this is from the Daily Mail. This laptop thing, it turns out this bong that I had the dream of is, could be a bomb. Could be a bomb indeed. Don't know if it's going to blow up the new world order because that seems to be going according to plan even if pope's on board he's like we need a new world order yeah this is what we need to have <laughs> is he italian i don't even know this new world order talk it's mainstream now mainstream they even had this, this just so you know they just had like a world government summit i don't know if you know about this the world government summit all got together klaus schwab came out the emperor himself you know this guy are we ready for a new world order well, we do know 
that global energy systems, food systems and supply chains will be deeply affected. So, and, uh, you know, for the World Government Summit in Dubai, which was li li la last week, you know what the topic was? They titled it, Are We Ready for the New World Order? And then the spooky dude, right? Because let's face it, he's spooky, right? It's like we've been programmed for this guy. <laughs> he's like the emperor from uh, the series, Star Wars series. We've been programmed for this guy. He says, look... We don't know what's going to happen when this new world order takes hold, but we do know this. We know this for sure. There's going to be issues with global energy systems. There's going to be issues with food systems and the supply chain. It's all going to be deeply, deeply affected. So get ready. Buckle up. But don't worry. You're on the show. You've been here for a while. I told you it was coming. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. Trust in God. Doesn't matter if the Pope's down with the new world order. If the Lord of hosts, the God of Jacob, Abraham, Isaac, and Jesus Christ is not down with the new world order, new world order ain't happening. Just got to tell you, okay? Because there was a fox that was released on the Capitol grounds at rabies, by the way. Foxes, just so you know, in scripture, very symbolic. You know what they are? In Ezekiel, we're told that... Israel's prophets are like desert foxes. They're liars. Foxes, they're a little cunning, little sneak, they sneak in, right? You find little holes and they get in there and then they mess up the harvest. Foxes are no good thing. Jesus said when the disciples say, where, where are you? Where do you live? Where do you live, Rabbi? They ask him. And he says, foxes have holes, birds have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to rest his head. Very symbolic, meaning you got the uh, liars and you got all these meat, meatballs that are so ungodly, so untrue, so corrupt, we have places for them in our hearts, but where is the Son of God? Where is Christ? Who, who has a place for Christ, the head of Christ, to rest in their life? Foxes have many holes. said in the book of Luke, let me read this to you. This is actually cool because he was talking about the system, if you will. They came to him and this is uh, Luke 13. Lord, are there only few that be saved? He said to him, Jesus says, you strive to enter into the straight gate, right? Try to go into the, the right way, the gate of love. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in, they won't be able. Once the master of the house is risen up and has shut the door and you begin to stand without and knock at the door saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. And he shall answer and say to you, I know not whence you are. I don't know who you are. Then you shall begin to say, we've eaten and we've drunk in your presence and you have taught in our streets. But he'll say, I tell you, I don't know you where you came from, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. A lot of people are going to claim Jesus Christ. They're going to tell you this is the way, this is the way. But the truth is, once the master is risen up, you liars, you got no place in the kingdom. We just talked about the cursed stones. Get right with the Lord. He says there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you shall see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all of the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourself are thrust out. 
and they shall come from the east and from the west and from the north and the south, and they shall sit down in the kingdom of God, and behold, there are the last which shall be first, and the first which shall be last. The same day, one of the Pharisees says to him, get thee out and depart from hence. Herod's going to kill you. And Jesus says this, because he's talking about Herod. He's talking about the beast system, right? And we got this fox, this rabies, this sick fox who had to be put down because it was biting people, right? In the uh, capital. You go tell that fox, today I'm casting out devils. I'm gonna do cures today and tomorrow. And on the third day, I'm gonna be perfected. Nevertheless, I must walk today and tomorrow and the day following, for it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you that killed the prophets. How often I would want to just put my arms around you and pull you in, protect you, but you wouldn't. You wouldn't. Behold, your house is left desolate. And verily I say to you, you'll not see me until the time when you shall say, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. It's not about the Lord coming now. It seems like it's about those who come in the name of the Lord. People that are going to complain, people that are going to claim Christ, claim the kingdom of God, who are liars. You're not going to come into the kingdom until you say, Blessed are those who come in the name, in the nature of Christ. This is all connected. And to Trump on Twitter, too. He was banned from Twitter. Banned from a lot of things. All of a sudden, he was locked down. I did a whole program about Nebuchadnezzar, where I compared Trump to Nebuchadnezzar. In an instant, he lost everything. But the story goes, there's a root that was left in the earth and that if he humbled himself and he came to know the Lord, that that root, that root that was in the earth would grow again. People hate corruption, and uh, a lot of people, Democrat and Republican alike, are starting to realize there's a lot of corruption going down. So Elon, out of the blue, pff, buys this lion's share. By the way, an issue, he didn't file, he didn't file for 11 days. That was a big deal. He made a lot of money like 150 something million dollars because he didn't file that way. And it was, he broke the law, supposedly. That's what they're saying, that's the news right now. He didn't really file until he, he too late, and he made a lot of money in the meantime. Supposedly when you buy more of a share, you're supposed to make people aware. I don't know, I'm not, I'm not in that realm. I used to work in retail. So following Elon coming out, shares of Twitter rose quite a bit. So he buys a lot. This guy's smart, right? This guy's smart. Elon Musk is known for the dragon, the SpaceX dragon. You know, the dragon that, the uh, the dragon rockets that, uh, you know, they've returned to the earth. They were cast into the earth. Very strange. It would be weird if the guy who creates the dragon rockets is the guy who gives power back to Donald Trump, giving him a voice again. He was cut off and all of a sudden the whole world can wonder after his tweets. And I'm not saying he's a bad guy. I don't know if he's a bad guy. I got, I got things to say, I've had things to say. I've been saying things, but I'm holding out for the best. 
holding up for the best because even Jacob was wrong in the scripture. He thought Esau was going to kill him. He thought that beast system was going to kill him. But then in the end, he realized that terrible system that he hated, that brother that he thought, oh my God, my whole life I'm running from. It was God the whole time. It was God the whole time. And they thought this system was going to destroy him. And what ends up happening? Nothing. He's like, I don't need you. It's kind of like it would be great if like, you know, <laughs> I've been worried about what's happening. Then, then, you know, when all this happens exactly the way I said it was going to happen, turns out it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. I can hope, right? We can pray. If people get right, I think things will be all right. But there's no denying that the things we've been talking about on the program, all this stuff, especially about hair, especially about hair, there's no denying that this stuff is going down. Do you know that there was just an... <laughs> It's called the Crown Act. The Crown Act. You know, the crown. The crown. We're supposed to be given a crown. There's the virus of the crown. So they just passed this Crown Act, which is about hair. How many shows have been talking about hair, right? The glory of a woman, of the woman, but the woman is not a woman, not a literal woman. It's the glory of the soul of man. The soul, the trident, the psyche, the idea of who we think we are. The glory of the woman is her hair. I'm going to get into what that means in a second, but really hair is very symbolic of carnality. Not a great thing. They just passed a bill called the Crown Act, and it's all about hair. passed the Crown Act banning discrimination against black hairstyles nationwide. On Friday, the U.S. House of Representatives finally passed the Crown Act, which they should. It can't be just because people got goofy hair. You can't be making fun of them. And you know what? It's true. There have been, there's been a lot of race-based discrimination on hairstyles. It's terrible. You know, not everybody has the same kind of hair, right? So this act is meant to create a respectful and open workplace for natural hair. It was first adopted in California and uh, a few short years ago, and now it will be in the entire country. The proposed legislation will prohibit employees from firing, refusing to hire, or otherwise discriminating against workers based on hair texture or hair style. If that hair texture or that hair style is commonly associated with a particular race or origin. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be discriminating. Who gives a I don't care what your hair looks like. Do you do a good job? Do you give good customer service? That's the way I, that's what I used to do. I gave great customer service. I did the best that I could. You do the best that you can. Shouldn't matter what your hair looks like. So they passed this bill. Strange though, if you think about it, because if we take it spiritually speaking, you just gotta hire anybody on whatever hair they got. You know, who cares that they got a bunch of hair? We're, we don't want you to discriminate against people who have problems with their hair. Spiritually speaking, that would be like saying, if people are immoral or worldly or corrupt, don't give them a hard time. I mean, I could be wrong. I don't know. But it's just strange that we talk about all this hair. I talk about it in the program, about the baldness, about how you should cut off your hair in shame. And then here we have the Hair Act. I mean, what are the odds, right? What are the odds? In this program, that's yeah, a pretty high. It seems like it's pretty high. Here's a big deal. I, I on the uh, the Good Morning Show, they even there was like a TikTok thing going on about this heatless hair curler called the Octo Curler, which is uh, I thought it was strange because of course the octopus and we talked about that on pro. I got a show coming very shortly. It's gonna blow your mind. But a lot's gonna go into it, so I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna put a pin in that right now, and we'll talk about it later. Does the 
this octopus thing, this jellyfish thing, it's not over yet. This goo, this goo, that's black. It's not over. A lot of weird stuff going on. Did you see that? By the way, did you see that, that AI black goo stuff? that into people's bodies and it's going to be able to move around and like it's, it looks it's amazing this has been around for a while just so you know it's not new first time i heard about black goo was um the black goo that they found when they opened this ancient egyptian sarcophagus it was all spooky done a bunch of programs on that too Weird things going on. Human Guardian on uh, Twitter sent me, sent me something. He said, you want to talk about hair? And then he pointed out 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And I looked it up. And it was a good passage. I'm glad he pointed it out to me. Or she. I don't know who it is. But it was an important passage. A, a passage, by the way, that ties into a lot of shows that I've talked about recently on a program where... You know, some pastors and preachers and all these people, these foxes, they're going to say that women are somehow less than men and that they can't do this or that. And they don't realize that th this is all symbolic. And, this, and if you go to the word meanings and you actually go to the root origin of that word, you find out it's not about a woman, it's about a bride. The bride of Christ is man's soul. Man's soul is symbolic of the woman. This is going to make a lot of sense in a second. I'm going to read this to you. This is not my favorite translation. You know, I like the, I'm a big fan of the King James, but King James is just read, it reads weird to me lately. Things just don't, I don't remember things the way they used to be. Very strange. 1 Corinthians 11. Follow my example. Okay, so this is Paul talking. Follow my example as I followed Christ's example. He never met Jesus. Christ appeared to him on the road. <laughs> he thought he knew it all. He was going to go persecute people who were preaching the truth. And then Christ woke him up, humbled him. He realized he was blind. I don't know nothing. I thought I knew it all. And then he decides that everything that he knew was dung. Like I knew in the religious system, it's all dung. You know? I was very studied, got baptized like a million times, I baptized myself, people baptized me, I never thought I got it right. I could add it all up, I was the head writer for the largest Christian network, Dung! none of it matters, none of it matters. Paul said the same thing, but this is him after, you know, and he's following this example of Christ, the man who he never met, because Christ was in him. Follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. I praise you for remembering me in everything and for holding the traditions just as I pass them on to you. But I want you to realize that the head of every man is Christ. Man, that word means mankind. The head of all mankind is Christ. Christ is in charge of all of us. Now, follow me. The head of the woman is the man. Mankind as a whole. The woman would be the soul, the intellect, the idea of who we think we are. The head of the soul, the head of the man is Christ. The head of the soul is the man in the world. Get it? You get it? I know, it's difficult. It'll get easier. And the head of Christ is God. Every man who prays or prophesies 
with his head covered dishonors his head. Meaning, if I'm praying and I'm not sharing Christ, because Christ is my head, I'm dishonoring. I'm not doing the right thing. I shouldn't cover my head, which is Christ. I shouldn't hide Christ. I should share Christ. Shouldn't cover that up. See what I mean? Every man who prays or prophesies with his head covers dishonors his head. So if I pray in my own soul, if I pray in my own nature, and I pray about like, oh, I hope that the car gets fixed and all that stuff, I'm dishonoring my own head, which is Christ. That's why I pray, Lord, help me to be better. Lord, help me to say the right things. Lord, help me to share the truth of God with people. Lord, help me to encourage people in you. Lord, help me to help people to love. Help me to love, Lord. Help me to be better, Lord. This, this is the way I pray. I don't pray about myself. I don't cover my head, which is Christ. But every woman, now we're talking about the soul, who prays and prophesies with her head uncovered, dishonors her head. So the woman is a soul. The soul is the man. So if the soul is praying and hasn't had her head covered, if I'm not covered by Christ, it's a dishonor to me. I know this is difficult. The soul of man, the soulish nature of man, the carnal man, shouldn't be praying without the covering of Christ. Do you get it now? I know it's still confusing. You shouldn't be praying out of your soulish nature. You should be allowing Christ to reveal the truth in you, for you, through you, when you pray. For if a woman does not cover her head, for if a soulish being does not have the covering of Christ, she might as well have her hair cut off. So here we get back to the alopecia, the crown act, the smack at the Oscars, the hair. It's a dishonor. You might as well have your hair cut off if you're going to pray, it's like it's all right to be rooted in the world, right? It's all right. Like, I like certain things in the world. I like, but if I'm going to discount God and I'm just going to go after the things that are carnal and the things that are sensual to me, it's a dishonor. I might as well cut off my hair. I might as well get rid of that experience. I might as well get rid of it. So every person that prays, without the covering of Christ, it's dishonorable. And everybody that prays without being covered by Christ, it's a shame to yourself. If a woman does not cover her head, your head is symbolic of how you think. If we aren't covered by the truth of God, if we aren't seeking the truth of God, if we aren't covered by the blood, if you will, the life is in the blood. If we're not covered by Christ and the truth of God and the love of God, it's a shame. For if a woman does not cover her head, she might as well have her hair cut off. And we know that if you cut off your hair, it's a shame to a woman. You see what I mean? A man ought not to cover his head. We should not hide our faith in Christ. Since Christ is the image and the glory of God, but a woman is the glory of the man. Okay, who's the glory? Okay, so Christ is the glory of God. Our soul, our identity in this world is the glory of mankind, our ego, which is connected to the hair. Do you see what I mean? It's not about male and female. There is no male and female in Christ. There's no Jew, no Greek, no Gentile, no male, no female in Christ. We're all one. The glory of mankind 
is our identity, our soul in the world. But Christ is the image and the glory of God, which is why we should be covered by this. For a man did not come from the woman. Christ did not come from us. We came from Christ. Does that make any sense to you? It's why that word woman, by the way, the literal translation means a bride, wife, the one that is espoused. For man did not come from a woman, but woman from a man. Neither was man created for woman, but the woman was created for the man. Christ wasn't created for us. We were created for Christ. Do you see this? So that we could be the body of Christ. It all works together. It is for this reason that a woman ought to have authority over her own head because of the angels. Nevertheless, in the Lord, woman is not independent from man, nor is man independent from woman. For as woman came from man, so also man, check this out, is born from woman. Everything comes from God. Woman, man is born from woman. Christ is born in us. Christ in you to be born again. Mary in Greek means man's rebellion. Christ is literally birthed out of a woman whose name means man's rebellion. So out of our ignorance, Christ is birthed to save us. He died so the woman could live. Adam died. Because Eve ate of that tree. We ate of that tree. The sensual world. The knowledge of good and evil. What's right? What's wrong? This world. We think that we're it. Christ died so that we could live. Now we must lay down our life so Christ can live. It all works together. It's all so incredibly cool. And this is a deep teaching. And I don't know if I did it any justice. I hope I did. So in the comment section, let me know if you caught what I was throwing down. And if not, hey, you know what? I hope you enjoyed the show. Because there's a lot of weird things going on, right? And it's going to get weirder. As long as you're okay, as long as you're loving, forgiving, as long as you put your trust in God. God, the most important thing there is. Love others. Forgive. Be content. Look at what you have and be grateful. Don't dwell on the negative, dwell on the positive. Because what we believe, whatever a man thinks, he becomes. Whatever a man believes, he becomes. The power of life and death is in your tongue. So be careful what you say, especially today. Because the days that are coming, it's going to get really wacky, people. I love each and every one of you. Do me a favor, share the channel around, hit that like button, subscribe, do what you got to do. And thank you for watching yet another show. I love you. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching Jacob Israel. Please hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, and share this channel around. If these shows have helped you, help Jacob to reach more any way you can and have the best day ever. Click it.